Welcome to Relation Tales, please like this video. And subscribe Relation Tales, my name is Joni, and today we're going to have some more stories from Reddit, but before we start it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to my channel, like the video, if you enjoy it, and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now without further let's go. Now let's get into today's stories to find out what happened. My wife and I had been together for almost 20 years when we ended things. It was by far one of the most difficult decisions I ever had to make, but I know that it was the right one. We met when we were in our early 20 seconds, and it was pretty much love at first sight for me. As I laid eyes on her, I couldn't help but be captivated by her beauty. Summoning my courage, I approached her and extended an invitation. However, my hopes were dashed when she declined my offer. Despite the initial setback, I accepted it gracefully and moved forward with my life. Yet, her image lingered in my thoughts, refusing to fade away. Nearly three weeks later, our paths crossed once more at the grocery store. Recognizing her instantly, I couldn't shake the feeling of destiny at play. To my surprise, she remembered me as well. Engaging in conversation, I felt compelled to take another chance and ask her out again. This time, she said yes. I always loved telling everybody about how we met in our story, because I thought it highlighted that we were meant to be together. For 20 years in our marriage, everything was flawless. We made good money. We had a beautiful home, we had four children together, and everyone was happy and healthy. We had our fair share of arguments, but it was always something that we worked through and took the time to understand the root cause of the arguments to improve our relationship for the future. There was a point in our marriage where it felt like we were fighting almost every day. I remember thinking that it was one of the worst times in my life. Every day I was afraid that she and I would be getting a divorce, it was that bad. We ended up going to marriage counseling and it helped us work through a lot of our issues. My wife and I recently decided that we wanted to put our house on the market and move into a new neighborhood. There were a lot of things we needed to do before listing it. One of the big things we did was to make sure that we had a good relationship with biggest ones that we had was getting rid of 20 years worth of accumulated junk. One day, I went up to the attic to go through some of the boxes we had stashed away up there to determine what needed to be trashed or sold. I found a box of my wife's old things and started going through it. I wasn't looking for anything in particular, but rather I was just sorting through it. At the bottom of the box, I found an old journal. All the time that I knew my wife, I had never known her to keep a journal or a diary or anything like that. Honestly, I thought it might have been something from her teenage years. I admit it might have been an invasion of privacy, but I let my curiosity win and I peeked inside. When I saw the dates on the entries, I realized they were from the time we were married. I hesitated to delve into the journal further, feeling a sense of intrusion into my wife's private thoughts during our time together. However, a particular detail caught my attention before I could set it aside, compelling me to continue reading. Repeatedly, she referenced someone she called Jay, a name distinctly different from mine, but with a clear implication of intimacy. It became evident that she and this Jay person shared a relationship beyond friendship. The entries detailed clandestine rendezvous disguised as book club meetings with her neighbors, where she confessed to experiencing unparalleled intimacy with him. Each word I read shattered my heart, as she candidly expressed her feelings of falling for him amidst the dilemma of our marriage. She felt like she had met the love of her life, and it wasn't me. As if that wasn't enough to make me want to divorce her right then and there. And in one of the later entries she mentioned that our daughter saw her with her boyfriend. I was absolutely infuriated when I read that. She had been so careless with her affair that our child caught her with another man. In the entry, she mentioned how she was able to convince my daughter not to say anything because she didn't want to divorce me. She manipulated my daughter into lying to me throughout many years of her life. It was clear from the journal entries that the boyfriend knew he was sneaking around with a married woman. The anonymity that she held within the journal for him made me suspect that he was someone she was protecting. I wasn't a hot-headed or violent guy, so it's not like I would have done anything to hurt him. Instead, I thought she didn't want his life to be ruined if someone found out. I didn't know what to do. As much as I wanted to rush down the stairs and confront my wife, I needed to make sure we were handling it the right way. On top of that, I needed to figure out who the guy was. If he was one of our friends or a neighbor who was married with children, I needed to know. I left the attic with the journal in my hands and I hid it in my dresser. I was going to be bringing that to the divorce attorney. My wife was out of the house, so I took the time to look for her. Then I had alone to search through her social media profiles and emails. When I did, I found someone who I suspected of being the man. I had nearly forgotten he existed. He was someone my wife and I used to socialize with, even going on double dates together years ago. As our neighbor and a close friend, he often joined us for activities like watching football games. However, one day, my wife approached me, expressing her desire to cut ties with them completely. She mentioned that his wife had made disparaging remarks about our parenting, 
leading to my wife's decision to sever connections without any discussion. Although I wasn't deeply attached to their friendship, I respected my wife's choice and complied. Reflecting on it now, I suspect there may have been an incident between her and our once close friends. On top of that, a lot of the problems we were having in our marriage were around that time. Everything made sense looking back. All of the puzzle pieces were there, but I didn't know how to put them together. We still lived in the same neighborhood as them. They were only a few houses down from us. We ran into them from time to time, but we all tended to ignore each other. I played it cool after I found out what I did while I tried to figure out what I wanted to do. My wife didn't suspect anything, and I just pretended like everything was normal. A couple of days after I found out, I was out front mowing the lawn when I saw the other man drive away from his house. I had no idea where he was going or when he would be back but I started walking over to his house before I could think better of it. It was a perfect opportunity to talk to his wife and see if she ever suspected anything was going on. I knocked on the door, and she was surprised to see me, but she welcomed me inside and poured me a glass of iced tea. After a few minutes of small talk, I asked her outright if she ever suspected her husband cheated on her. She was taken aback by my question, but after a couple of moments, I think she realized that I was asking for a reason. She told me that there was a time when she did suspect he was cheating, and she thought that it was with my wife. She had been very uncomfortable with their relationship, and her husband had promised her that nothing was going on. Regardless, she asked them not to see each other anymore. Apparently, that's why the friendship between all four of us really ended. What she said confirmed in my mind that her husband was the man in the journals. I explained to her everything that I discovered and I watched her heartbreak as she listened. I felt really bad for telling her, but I thought she should know the truth. So, we made a plan to talk to them together. Later that day, I went home and told my wife I bumped into our old neighbor and we agreed to have dinner together. At first, my wife didn't want to go, but I convinced her it was important to move on from the past. So, she came with me. When we arrived, the other couple was cooking in the kitchen. The man seemed surprised to see me, and everyone felt a bit awkward. I noticed my wife and the other guy hardly looked at each other. We all sat down for dinner, and when things got quiet, I mentioned finding my wife's old journal while cleaning the attic. She was shocked when I said that. She seemed to be frustrated that I read it, but I ignored her and revealed the contents of it. When I was done, I outright asked her and the other man how their affair started. They tried to deny it, but there was no use. They admitted to everything, and my wife was pleading with me to leave so we could talk about it in private. I told her that I didn't want to talk about it in private, and I forced her to tell me everything right there. Apparently, through all of the double dates that we went on she and the other guy started to develop feelings. One night while they were over at our house and we had a few glasses of wine, they were getting a little handsy while they were alone. From there they had intimate for the first time and they continued a five-year-long affair. My wife developed feelings that the other man didn't have. She wanted to leave me to be with him but he didn't want to leave his wife. Because of that, my wife cut everything off. Both myself and my neighbor told them that we didn't want anything to do with them after this. There was no coming back from it and we would be leaving. I told my wife that I had already been talking to a divorce attorney. She broke down and cried, pleading with me to forgive her. She told me that it was one of her biggest regrets and she would take it all back in an instant if she could. On top of everything, I told her how disgusting it was that she involved our daughter in the lie. Over the next several months, we went about getting our divorce. Throughout all of it, my wife tried to convince me just to go to counseling and to forgive her. I wasn't listening to any of it. We already put our house up for sale, so we decided to keep going with that plan. We split the money we got from selling the house, and my ex-wife got half of it in the divorce. After that, I didn't owe her anything. Because she got our daughter involved in her affair and convinced her to lie, I was given custody of our kids. My children still see their mom, but I've been doing my best to help them through all of this. My daughter, who was part of the lie, has said sorry for keeping it secret for so long. She felt bad about it all these years but didn't know what to do because she didn't want to hurt the family. I don't have any love left for my ex-wife now. If she hadn't involved our daughter, I might have been able to remember some good times. But what she did to our child is unforgivable, and I can't stand to be around her because of that. Now let's get into the second story. My girlfriend and I have been together for three years. We met in our biology class during college and we enjoyed our lab time together. I asked her out on a study date before anything else and she agreed to go with me. We ended up talking about everything but biology and we both failed the test that we were attempting to study for. We had a really strong connection and I saw a future with her regardless of us being very young at the time. I never really had the desire to mess around with a lot of women. I thought that I found one and I was content with being with her. We graduated college and we moved in together right away. We both had a hard time landing good jobs after graduating but after a little while we were starting to settle into everything. 
My girlfriend studied marketing and communications in college and part of her thesis project was to study how people became influencers. Her project was to become one herself. She was able to gain a significant following and brand deals that she still has to this day. Because of that, she was able to work on growing her following and eventually start working for herself. It wasn't a conventional job by any means but I was supportive of her and she was doing something she enjoyed so I was happy. At first, most of her followers seemed to be women who were interested in fashion and makeup tips but after a while her follower demographic turned to a lot of men. She's a very beautiful woman and I totally understand why the men were following her. Unfortunately, because her audience had transitioned to mostly men her content catered to them more. She was posting pictures and more revealing clothes and became one of the most popular women in the world and a lot of the captions became more suggestive. I was a little insecure about what she was posting. I didn't like to know that a bunch of other men had seen my girlfriend in that way. It's okay for women to share things like that online. But I'm a very private person, so it was tough for me to accept it. I knew she got lots of messages every day from guys who wanted to be with her. Sometimes she'd even show me those messages, and we'd laugh about them together. Even though I didn't like other guys seeing her like that, I trusted that she wouldn't do anything with them. I didn't think she would, anyway. My girlfriend is kind of old-fashioned when it comes to romance. She likes it when her partner does little, thoughtful things for her. There are some things she thinks she shouldn't have to do, like cleaning her car. But I don't mind doing it. Doing things for her is my way of showing that I care. So cleaning her car is a small thing to do to make her happy. So, one day I was cleaning out her car, and I found something that raised a lot of red flags for me. Underneath the passenger side seat was a condom wrapper. Right away, I knew that it wasn't mine. My girlfriend and I don't have intimate in the car, and on top of that we've been together long enough that we've had talks about protection and we weren't using condoms. So someone else had been in my girlfriend's car that needed a condom. My girlfriend had to have cheated on me. There was no question in my mind at the time. Right away. I tried looking for any evidence that I could through social media, but I couldn't find much. I needed to figure out who it was before I confronted her, and she tried to lie about it. When I went inside, she was on the couch sleeping while a television show played in the background. It was excellent timing, so I grabbed her phone and started looking through it. I searched through her messages for keywords that people having an affair might type in. Eventually, my best friend's phone number came up. They have been talking about sleeping together for a while. It started when my girlfriend posted a picture of herself at the beach on her Instagram. He reached out to her and told her that he hadn't been able to stop thinking about the picture. My girlfriend told him that she was flattered to hear him say that. She had thought about him for a while. Their messages were extremely sexual, and my girlfriend even initiated sending nudes to him. She was obviously very excited to see those, and he told her that he needed to see her ASAP. My girlfriend didn't hesitate. She said she wanted to go too. They quickly made plans to meet up and be together intimately. He had a girlfriend he lived with, so I figured they hooked up in the car to avoid being caught. After being intimate, they texted each other about how much fun they had. It seems they met up many times after that. They both liked sneaking around with each other. They were excited about the idea of being in a relationship or getting caught by us. I was really angry and decided I was going to break up with my girlfriend. If she liked my friend so much, she could be with him. I couldn't stand to look at her anymore. I sent myself as much evidence as I could then I set my girlfriend's phone back down. If they were going to completely betray my trust and disregard the care that I have for them then I was going to get my payback on them. I knew that my girlfriend kept her social media profiles logged in on her laptop so while she was still asleep I went over to them. I changed the password on her Instagram account so she couldn't log in easily. I took the screenshots that I had of her messages with my best friend and I posted them on her wall and story. I even wrote a caption about how she cheated. I made sure to tag my former best friend in the post as well. The comments quickly rolled in and I started to feel kind of bad. Then I remembered that she completely disrespected me, and I didn't care anymore. Her follower count was going down, and it seemed like a lot of people were sharing the post. I felt like I had won a little victory. My girlfriend woke up later and didn't know what was going on. When she found out, she got really mad and found me at her computer. I told her I wanted her to leave the apartment. My best friend tried calling me to explain, but I blocked his number and didn't listen. His girlfriend contacted me, asking lots of questions, and I tried my best to answer. She ended up breaking up with him too. I kicked my girlfriend out of the apartment and let her deal with what happened. I kept checking things for a while, and at first, I thought she blocked me on social media because I couldn't find her account. However, I learned that she actually deleted it. It was her main source of income, and she had to completely get rid of it. A lot of the brands that she worked with pulled their sponsorships because what she did didn't align with their values. Having their brand attached to her name was a liability after the fact. I don't know what she's doing now, 
and I don't care. All I know is that she had her entire life ruined because she screwed me over. Third story. Did I cheat on my wife under these circumstances? I was messaged to post here. Remove if not appropriate here. Please read everything before coming to a conclusion. I slept with someone else when my wife asked me for a divorce. Now she wants to stay married for good. She said asking me for a divorce was a mistake and she wants me stay with me for good. While we haven't filed, I assumed she meant our marriage was done for good this time. The reason being, our marriage was both good and bad, and it was a work in progress. Out of the blue one day, she told me she wanted a divorce. Considering I didn't want to force anything, I agreed to it. Still hurt, but I didn't want to stay with someone who didn't want to be with me. The problem remains that I slept with someone else during this time we were divorced. My wife is unaware of it. She's also a friend of mine. And when I talked to her about my divorce, we decided to sleep together. It wasn't after we slept together that my wife waned to stay together. I clarified this with my friend, and she said she's supportive of the decision I make, but that if things don't work out, she's here for me. She also said that she will not tell anyone about this. I don't know what I want now for certain in my marriage. I love my wife, but I also have mixed feelings about this friend. Fourth story, I think my GF cheated on me. So the story goes that my girlfriend told me that one of her schoolmates wants to hang out with her. I generally trusted my GF with everything and never really cared when she hung out with her friends. So therefore, I was okay with her hanging out with that guy from her school. So apparently they went out in this guy's car, had drinks together. And after that my GF invited him over to her house for some more drinks. I was texting her and asking her about her whereabouts. She made no mention about all this. So here's the question I want answered from you guys. The next morning she calls me up and tells me all the details about her night with the guy. She explains that she did invite him over to her house but after like a drink she got kind of ill and started throwing up. She told me that the guy stayed with her to take care of her and left around 5 a.m. M in the morning. She is usually very honest with me. And as far as I know we both are in a loving relationship together with utmost honesty. But am I missing something here? Is there a lie involved? What do you guys think? Thanks for joining us on this chapter of Relation Tales. If you were moved by these stories, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Don't miss out on the upcoming emotional roller coaster of relationships. Your support means the world, and we can't wait to share more compelling tales with you. Until next time, remember, Every relationship has a story worth telling. See you soon.